Hello, my name is Steve Mace from Soulwise, and what I'd like to do is give a uh, quick introduction and quick setup example of for the new uh, Ingenious 2611P outdoor bridging access point. Now, I don't know if any of you have seen the 2611P before, but basically it's just a follow-on from the slightly older product, the 2610. The 2610 we sold in its thousands, so obviously we hope the 2611 will be equally as popular. Uh, as far as uh, functional difference between the 2610, the 2611 is virtually identical. Um, the only slight changes are it now has uh, dual polarity uh, diversity antennas built into the front panel, which uh, may in some circumstances give you improvements for range and link stability. And uh, the other advantage is apparently it has a slight improvement in weather protection, though to be honest we never had any issues with this on the 2610, the previous product anyway. Uh, so let's go uh, and start talking about setting up a link between a pair of 2611s. Now from my previous talks etc you're probably aware that uh, a basic link usually consists of an access point at one end and a client at the other and that's exactly how we set up on the 2611 for a link that enables us to do point to point links or point to point to point, point to multi point links multi point links being where you have still have the single access point but you could have multiple clients connected to it so that for example could be on a site where you've got multiple remote offices that want to connect or caravan sites etc etc so the first thing to do is to go through a setup on the product then so uh, what I've done here is I've got a 2611 and its LAN port is connected to our network uh, started my browser up already as you can see and what we can do now is just type in the default IP address of the 2611 which is 192.168.1.1 enter username password box which is admin and admin click OK OK so we're into the uh, main status page for the 2611 so the first thing we want to do is we're going to change the IP address of this particular unit that's because when we finish doing this we're going to have two units on and obviously we don't want them on the same IP address otherwise they'll clash so what we'll do is we'll just go to system IP settings and I'm going to change the address of this unit to 1.2 remember the default address is 1.1 click on apply and I'll just apply that <coughs> Da, 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 da. and rather usefully it now reboots itself and presents us on the new address yet again admin admin and now we're back into it on the new address of 1.2 as you can see here and on the uh, browser line up here as well now we're going to go to uh, system system properties now, remember that we have two ends, one's going to be access point, one's going to be a client. The default mode for a 26 lesson is client bridge mode. But just to make things easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of this end of the link to client. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the correct country code. This just means it uses the correct channels then. Uh, United Kingdom, United Kingdom. Like that. And now we're going to apply. Just apply those changes. And that's it. OK now we need to think about the SSID now um, the access point by default has a slightly different SSID so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the uh, SSID of now this client to match the what the uh, the SSID of the access point so uh, wireless wireless security not wireless security wireless network that's it wireless network now in wireless network we're going to change the SSID to be ingenious 1 I just happen to know that's going to be what the uh, access point is going to be and the other thing is uh, while on this screen is to look at this mode here which is called WDS client 
very confusing description if I may say so because WDS client doesn't actually mean WDS client what it actually means is Mac transparency uh, if any of you have ever set up uh, bridge client uh, type links before you'll know that um, in some circumstances the uh, client isn't Mac transparent that means that any traffic that goes through it is identified with the Mac address of the actual uh, Wi-Fi client rather than the computers behind the client that sent the traffic through the client. Now that can create lots of issues if you're running routers, it can also create issues with DHCP, so really what you want is MAC transparency. So what that means is that the true MAC address of the computers will be forwarded and passed through by the Wi-Fi client. And the way to do that is you just tick this box. Done. So now it'll be MAC transparent. And we're now just going to apply that. <coughs> Wait for it to apply those settings. Okay. Right. Uh, now what I'm going to do is we finished uh, doing all the changes that we need for a basic client bridge setup. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disconnect this uh, this client and I'm then going to connect it to a notebook computer I just happen to have running on the other side of the office um, and then uh, I'm then going to uh, connect another 2611 to our network here so then we can go through the configuration of the access point so I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail okay so I've now connected the other 2611 to our network here and if it's had time to boot up if I go to the default address 1.1 Yep, we're straight into it, no problem at all. Obviously it hasn't asked me for username and password this time because my excellent Firefox has remembered it. So, uh, what we need to do now is we need to change the operating mode, which at the moment, as I say, default is client bridge. We need to change it to access point. So, uh, system, system properties. Uh, we're going to change it to access point mode. At the same time, we're going to change the country to UK. Bingo, and uh, we're going to click on Apply. Now just while that's rebooting, that essentially is all we need to do. We have now configured the access point. So while it's restarting up, I'm just going to start up a DOS box. I'm going to set up a ping to that remote notebook. Remember that remote notebook is now connected to the uh, 2611 client. Remember the IP address, 1.230-T. Uh, it was that quick. <laughs> you notice that the link is now made. We're pinging the other notebook successfully over this Wi-Fi link. There was no fuss, it just happened. Uh, if I go look at the wireless client list on this access point, there it is, showing the MAC address of that remote 2611. And obviously because we're on the network, I can even bring up the uh, 2611 from the other end of the link. Yep, there's the 2611 on the other link. link. Remember, this is the one called client, so we know which one's which. And I can look at connection status. And there it is saying it's associated with the uh, with the access point using the SSI Ingenious one. As you can see, that's all there is to it. It's a piece of absolute doddle. Uh, what you wanted to, if you wanted to do now, what you could go in and do is play around with the security settings and all that sort of thing. But essentially, that's all you need to do when you do a Wi-Fi link on the 2611. Thanks a lot.